Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low-budget wonder. Now check this out. Let's take a look at our ingredients. First we've got our dill Havarti, some lunchbox peppers, some cherry tomatoes, capers, red onion, black olives, green pimento olives, mint, got some parsley over here in the corner, and uh, some olive oil, balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, and some artisan roasted garlic bread. So the first thing we want to do is cut the ends off on these peppers and then cut them in half. Then we're going to come back with a spoon. We're going to take out the membrane and all the seeds. Just like that. Once you got a big pile like this, we'll take it straight to a hot pan with some olive oil and we'll get our sear on. I like to move them around a little bit and give them a good toss. Make sure they're completely covered in oil so they can soften up as they're getting their sear. In the meantime, everything that is small and round gets cut in half. Then we'll just start adding everything to a bowl. Check on our peppers and as you can see they've got some good color on them. We'll go ahead and add that to the mix. Now here's our Dio Herbarti cheese. I'm going to cut this in half and then we want about a half inch slice out of each one of these so we'll cut these in half again but down the side. It should look something like this. And just a little dab of olive oil again in the pot on medium high heat and we'll drop each one of these in there. It just takes a couple minutes. In the meantime, slice up some red onion and separate every individual slice by hand. Then we'll add our capers, chop up some nice fresh parsley, and some mint. Add that to our bowl. Last but not least, some fresh garlic. Now it's time to add our olive oil, some salt and pepper, and a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Give that a good stir. And if you're able to do this fast enough, then you can check on your cheese and flip each individual piece over. Now I'm overdoing it a little bit. I like my cheese a little bit more melted, but uh, you decide how long you want to do it. And we'll cut up our artisan bread, and we'll start the plate. Drop in the dill Havarti cheese, and our veggie mix right over the top. Don't forget to spoon in some capers. And there you have it. Dill Havarti with seared peppers, cherry tomatoes, olives, and capers. Right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching. And be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. If you want a thicker ricotta cheese, you want to put it in a strainer or over a cheesecloth so it can lose most of its moisture in the refrigerator overnight. Then you want to add your sugar snap peas to some boiling water. But you don't want to forget the salt like I did. This only takes about a 30 or 40 second blanch and you strain it when they turn bright green and you want to heavily salt some ice water and give these a soak until they cool down completely. Now let's dive into our other ingredients. We've got a few peppers here, some flat leaf parsley, a green onion, some olive oil, some baby kale, a lime, some fresh mint, and salt and pepper. For the purposes of color and flair, we'll just cut out a piece of this orange and yellow pepper. And we're going to cut long lengths out of it. 
and just go straight in half. And we'll do that with each one. Now we'll cut up our green onion into some scallions, our flat leaf parsley, and this mint, you just want to pluck all the leaves off, and then go through it with a nice steady chop. The baby kale is just as easy, but what you're looking for is this long stem. Just yank that off of each one of these leaves, but keep them whole. We don't want to chop these up. This will help give our salad a leafy texture. Now, when these have cooled down, we'll go ahead and pull these out individually and just let the water drip off. And then when we're ready, we'll just combine all of our ingredients here one at a time. But don't forget your lime. Just want to use half of one of these sides and just give it a good squeeze right over the top. And we're going to add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And a little bit of seasoning, just salt and pepper to taste. Then when you're ready, you can give your salad a good toss or like what I'm doing for the sake of the camera, give it a good stir. And that's what she should look like. Now here's our ricotta. We're going to add some olive oil to that as well. And a little bit of seasoning, just the salt and pepper. And then what we want to do is come back over it here with a whisk. And then we're going to mix this thoroughly until it's smooth. And it's a good time to give it a taste and make sure it's to your liking. And then just take a heaping tablespoon on a small dish or salad plate. Smooth it out evenly and put your salad right over the top. And there you have it. Fresh veggies with ricotta, mint, and lime right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing you want to do is add some salt and a little bit of olive oil to some boiling water. Then you're going to add a couple cups of macaroni and you want to cook it as directed by the manufacturer. In the meantime you want to cut up some vegetables starting with some celery some green onions and some shoestring slices of carrot. I like to just pulse these in a food processor until I get it to about this size here. Now if you don't have a food processor just chop them up until it's real fine like this. Now for our dressing I've got about a cup's worth of mayonnaise and I'm adding another cup of heavy cream. Now a couple tablespoons of brown sugar, a little bit of salt and pepper, a dab of soy sauce, and a little bit of sesame oil. Now's a good time to add our chopped ingredients. Now all you want to do is give this a good whisk until it's smooth and creamy. Now's a good time to check our macaroni. And you want to just give it a good taste and make sure it's cooked all the way through. Once that's good, give it a good strain and immediately add it back to your pot. And you want to add about a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar and stir that in thoroughly. Then you want to pour the dressing right over the top of the macaroni. And again, mix this in thoroughly. Then I like to add it back to the other bowl, cover it with saran wrap, and throw it in the refrigerator to chill. Now you've got a perfectly marinated 
cold noodle salad. And there you have it, macaroni salad right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. First thing you want to do is boil some water and add some chicken bouillon. You can use broth if you'd like, but this is a cheaper, more efficient way of doing it. Adds great flavor to your chicken breast. It'll only take about 20 minutes for this to fully cook. This is a good time to start preparing our salad. Hand torn pieces is the way to go. We'll throw in some sugar snap peas, some carrots. I like to grate my cucumber. A little bit of chopped celery, some lunchbox peppers, definitely some mushrooms. And what's a salad without some red onion? And that'll pretty much sum up our vegetables. Just give them a good toss. Now we need to make a relish out of this mint, mango, and pineapple. And I've got a good slice of this pineapple here. I'm just going to cut it lengthwise and then cross cut it here into small pieces. And you just want to do the same thing to the mango. Then I just pull a bunch of these mint leaves, chop them up real fine, and add that to the mango and pineapple with a little bit of chili flakes. Now usually I have a lot of pineapple left over after I make this relish because I only need so much. I like to make a pina colada and I'm going to plug that at the end of this video so check it out. Now our chicken's done, but you want to be sure that it's cooked all the way through. So you want to stab it with a meat thermometer like this one here and make sure that temperature rises up to about 165 degrees. And it's not a bad idea to throw it in the fridge for a few minutes let it cool off. Now in a hot skillet, and I mean really hot, you want to add some coconut milk and it's going to start boiling immediately. You're going to add a couple tablespoons of curry powder, stir that in quickly. And the only other thing you want to do here is you're going to add some salt and pepper. As you can see it's boiling pretty quick so we're going to want to get it off the heat as soon as we're done seasoning and pour it straight into a cool bowl and you're going to want to put this in the refrigerator and let it cool down a little bit or the freezer if you need it a little bit faster and when it comes to the chicken it's best not to just chop it up with a knife it's good to finger pull the meat this will allow the curry to get inside there and flavor it a lot better. Now here I've got some dates. You can use raisins if you prefer, but I think these add a lot more flavor. You just want to chop these up. I'll be adding that here to the chicken in just a minute. But you want to pour about three ounces to every cup of chicken. But we've got a lot more than that here, so we're going to add twice the amount. Now add the dates. And just go ahead and get into it with your hand and press all that curry deep into the chicken. Make sure all that flavor is absorbed. Now plating's easy. Just center up all the vegetables. And then come right around with some crispy noodles all around the outside. Then you're going to take about half of this curry chicken, press it a nice firm little ball and set it right on top in the center. Now hit it with some relish around the outside. I usually go in three different places. And there you have it. Curry chicken salad right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. 
Thank you for watching, and be sure to stop by PoorMan'sGourmetKitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients. There's three different recipes you want to get going the night before you want to eat your taco salad, like this salsa here. You're also going to want a good guacamole, and some really good chili. And my salsa, guacamole, and chili no beans recipe will be included at the end of this video and in the description below. And once all those are complete, you want to add some red beans to the chili no beans mix you made the night before. And you want to just mix these in and get them cooked for about another half an hour is all while you prep your vegetables for your salad. Start with some iceberg lettuce, red onion, chopped lunchbox peppers, black olives, cucumber, and red cherry tomatoes. But you can add anything else you'd like. Just give it a good toss. Now instead of a fried tortilla, I'm going to use corn chips and I'm actually using ranch Doritos. I'm going to plate that salad right over the top. Then ladle in the red beans and chili. Drop in some fresh guacamole. And if you have it, some sour cream. If I can ever get it off the spoon. Now just top it off with some grated cheese and you can use the salsa as a dressing. And there you have it. Taco salad right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.